Cheers, welcome back. The 15K in 90 day self-worth, self-reflection challenge. Why 90 days and why self-worth in order to achieve 15K in 90 days? First of all, 90 days is the time period that is needed to change a new habit, to, to really to align with a new direction in life. So although all over the internet you hear marketers, entrepreneurs saying like, okay, so if you do these three things, that will lead you to the, to the glory land and you will get 15 Ks. Now, of course, that is really tailored much more on on the ego, on our surface level desires, because that's really what we want to believe that if we do these three things only, then all our problems will be solved. But then we go ahead, we follow steps A, B, C, and then we get stuck at letter number D, because if we follow A, B, C, that will get us to X, Y, Z, but we get stuck on letter D. So that's really what I want to pay attention to, much more than just our surface level desires because at the end especially when you are an intuitive and empath and you want to build a business in the holistic health industry you want much more than just the material things especially when you're an old soul you have already figured that the material things the material wealth is not the all and be all so we want something more we want something of meaning we want purpose we want fulfillment and I get it, we are very complex beings and although we already have this program going on, like wait a minute, if I have achieved these material financial elements that society is preaching that this is really what we should be getting after, if we are getting that and we're still not fulfilled, then, then what? It was all for nothing. Or what if I go after that and I burned out? Or I experience more stress and more anxiety or I feel depressed of doing certain things that actually I don't really feel like doing but I have to do it anyway in order to meet these society societal expectation so really what I want to focus on is the hustle of alignment because your so-called service level desires they are like the tip of the iceberg and even if you say like, you know what, I want a complete different life. I want to experience different things in my life to compare to everything I've been doing so far and what I've been experiencing so far. Yes, the grass might not be greener at the other side, but at least I could see it from a different angle or a different perspective. And that's really what my mind, my soul and my spirit is really after. I want to see life from different angles and different perspective in order to accumulate knowledge, wisdom and experiences because that will make a better contribution to the evolution of my soul. So although you have been living maybe many years of your life in a certain way and you have come to the conclusion like I want something different. What do I need to do in order to make that change? to make that transformation. And yes, maybe you have been delving around in, in spiritual development, holistic health, because you realize that we first must align the mind, body and spirits because we, before we can experience the external world, because the external world is of course always a reflection of our internal world and how we project our internal world externally. So to experience our service level desires, you know, the outcomes, I always say like, you know, everything that we experience in our out outside world, these are outcomes, these are symptoms of something that's happening underneath the surface, of that what other people are not noticing that we are actually doing. To get results, we must take action. But the type of action we take are these actions are these inspired, are these inspired actions that get us to the results that we are getting or are these actions based on something else, a limiting belief and doubt and fear and insecurity or are these actions based on like you know 
this is my worth. These are my values and these are the values that I can share with the world so others can benefit from that as well. And in return, we can create a healthy exchange. So what I'm doing, it can amplify my purpose, my mission. And it can also help me to, let's say, turn this into a business, package my ideas and solutions and automate that, systemize it, so eventually you can also scale it as, let's say, as a business owner. I've been wandering around quite a lot and what I've been thinking about, like the direction I'm going with my channel. Is this going to be an escape, an escape from our modern way of living? A way to relax, recharge, reflect, align. Those beautiful things of what mindfulness can do. Mindfulness in nature. Uh, which is of course beautiful. It's very nice to have a place where you can go for self-reflection and relaxation. And to explore the depth of our consciousness. Of our minds and spirits. And what is capable to do of really what humanity has yet to yet to explore because the human spirit has the capabilities to really to explore the vastness of the universe that exists within us that's why i always say the really the the only corner of this universe that we can change or influence or transform is that what exists within us Because eventually everything is a two-way street, like yes, you can go into spiritual escapism for not wanting to face your challenges in life. Or would you go into spiritual development because you want to transform something within your day-to-day -day practical way of living? And I think everything has to go hand in hand, everything has to go in balance, in harmony. Like you could go escape into the woods, but when you come home and you feel, ah, okay, that was nice, and you feel recharged, rejuvenated, but you're not going to do anything with that. Meaning, also, you could go into personal development, developing your mind on how to develop healthy habits and disciplines. Because if you are into spiritual development and you want a life of freedom, free your mind, free your spirits, that can only come from a life of discipline. And as someone who is pretty much ADD myself, someone who is very hyper in the mind, quiet externally, but very hyper in the mind, a lot of people see me as a very quiet person, but they haven't really met my complexities of my inner world. The complexities, of course, of a deep diver, a little fish swimming around in his own, in, a, in his own depth of his own ocean. So, when it comes to meeting our surface level desires, combined with our core desires, like, for example, <clears throat> you could be unemployed being stuck at home all day long, waking up 8, 9 p.m. in the morning, waking up long after sun did, you are already behind, behind, uh, behind of your own biological rhythm with nature, because you woke up before the sun did. To feel connected, we must wake up before the sun does. That's how we can get ahead. And when you are unemployed, a feeling unprotective, maybe you do one or two things for the whole day, which actually you could have done within 20 minutes, but you're just stuck in procrastination and doubting and not feeling like it. You could have a next desire of actually, you know what, I want to get a job mainly because I want to, I need to have a bit of routine and discipline throughout my day. 
and once you move to the next step and you have finally that job and you got there and you think all right I need a full-time income but I know like working full-time whether it be in the UK USA or Canada um, a full-time job is not really full-time it's sacrificing your whole life just to get a basic living mainly with the cost of living of where we are heading right now it's absolutely insane go to the supermarkets do some groceries get 10 items and spending 40 50 50 pounds dollars whatever it is maybe for one day of cooking and preparing so a full-time job alone is not cutting it financially you know that and once you've got the job you say all right my basic needs are kind of met but that's about it I can't really do that much else financially is this life is this living no you're not you're just down the bottom of this pyramid scheme we call society where shit goes down and money goes up and then you think all right so the next step for me is actually developing my values my skill sets my knowledge so I can offer something perhaps on a self-employed basis and set my own rates so you move away from being an employee to a self-employed perhaps from earning 10 to 15 pounds an hour as an employee now you can move to 30 40 60 pounds dollars an hour as a self-employed which is great which is a improvements and once you are there you have your periods of one week you have clients your schedule is filled and the other week not so much and maybe the next week also not so much and you do whatever it takes you go out networking and you put all your time and effort and energy into it being active on social media spending pouring your time into commenting on other people's stuff so they can feel important and hopefully in return they return the favor and engage with your stuff that you're putting out and all the things that are required to get noticed these days and you're pouring from your glass you're pouring from your glass and are you getting in return and once you get a client you done a session for one or two hours the client says all right thank you here's your rate Oof, I'm gone I'm healed I'm good for now thank you and again you step onto this treadmill seeking for the next client and you think about hey you know from being self-employed still trading my time for income still being on this treadmill what are my next steps what are my next steps so I can capitalize a little bit more on the clients I have worked so hard for to attract and offer them multiple solutions that can help them with the challenges they are dealing with and in return is going to help you to set up multiple pillars of multiple streams of both active and residual passive income so that's really the whole philosophy in the idea of what it is that I want to put out like we want to have these service level desires like not everybody wants to have a luxurious mansion with 15 exotic sports cars but maybe some of us we fancy a peaceful quiet life a little cabin in the woods on the edge of society of civilization connected with nature having our spiritual practice do a bit of shamanic drumming without having to worry and think about our neighbors and be connected with ourselves. simple living but also that of course has a cost everything has a cost if you want to have a bit of luxury a bit of comforts a bit of conveniences and have a bit of facilities around you not having depend on a location for an income so what is really requires to be in a line with both your core desires 
of purpose, passion, drive, excitement, joy, love, empathy, compassion, satisfaction and fulfillment with both the service level desires of a bit of luxury and comfort. Of course, it's the whole journey of allowing ourselves to see ourselves worthy of living that life is owning our values that are most authentic to us, that comes most natural from us, where we don't have to fit in a box, where we don't have to fit a square into a box in order to pretend someone that we are actually not, in order to meet the expectations of that environment we are trying to fit into. Instead, leading the path of authenticity, of creating for the joy of it, which is giving pleasure, joy and satisfaction of being in that state of being. It's not just about the doing, it's about becoming so we can be the person we were always were, we just have forgotten, we have suppressed them because of the expectations we had tried to meet from someone else. That's really what I mean with owning your value so you can be of value, is to first of all allow yourself to see yourself providing the solutions and the ideas and the kind of services that you actually want to create for your own joy of it in such a way that others can benefit from it and are willing to give you a compensation for it. And then also see yourself worthy of living your ideal lifestyle, whether it be it a lifestyle of self-care, closer to nature, surrounded by nature, live a life of joy, fulfillment, meeting new and interesting relationships and exploring and experiencing, reconnecting with the inner child that wants to explore and experience, move beyond this boredom we have been in, perhaps in a maybe living environment that is long overdue, a relationship that has been long overdue, a working environment that has been way overdue, that has been paying the bills, but now it's the next step, like what it is that we can do, is to remember that we are this tiny little drop of water that wants to remember and reconnect with this awareness that this tiny little drop is part of an ocean all around us. If the tiny little drop serves ocean, the ocean can serve him in infinite and abundant ways. That's the nature of who we really are. That's our true authentic self. That's really what we're here to do, is to remember we connect with that. But for that we have to align with, of course, with our beliefs, with the thoughts and the feelings, the feelings and the thoughts which is a two-way street that communicates with us, with each other. We do certain things and we expect maybe a disappointment, a rejection. That's why we procrastinate. We don't want that. We don't want to go through that pain. But maybe this is an, a limited belief that we have created for ourselves. Because maybe it's not really about the rejection that we receive but we are rejected because we feel rejected. And if we continue to feel rejected, we stay stuck in our old ways of living that is not longer serving us. And that's why when we become centered within ourselves and we go and do the things that are necessary to get our ideas and solutions out in the world, for let's say social media networking as an example, we go and get out and say, hey, I got an idea, I got an, uh, a solution. You want to listen? And someone said, no, thank you, I'm good, good luck with it. I say, all right, cool, thanks for your know. 
let me see how I can get closer to a yes. Let me go through a couple of more no's. Because one out of ten is going to say yes. And don't take this rejection personally. But if our inner child always felt rejected, we expect rejection. And then we say, you know what, this is pointless. I'm not doing that. I'm not going through that pain. I'm not going through this hassle. It's too, much, it's too stressful. It gives me too much anxiety. I want to feel cozy, warm. Sure, let me go and explore this personal development thing. Let me explore the comfort of getting out of nature. But not doing anything with it. Then all of that is nothing more than spiritual bypassing. It's about integration. So we can own it and be it. Instead, going through these little uncomforts of pain, going to the gym, lifting weights can be painful. When you go through that pain, you grow. You experience the, the growing pains of growing. We do that long enough, we're stretching up. We're stretching up our awareness. And that's when we overcome and empower our self-image, self-belief that empower our thoughts, our feelings, and that will lead to better habits, and that makes the whole circle around, and then nothing more we wanna act upon of who we are more. So what I continue will be sharing, of course, is this whole process of self-reflection, because we must reflect on that what we stumble upon. Because if we take a step back, we can step up in self-awareness. So this is, this is what continues to happen. But this self-awareness is not about accumulating philosophical ideas to have an interesting conversation at the dining table. I mean, what the bloody point is that? This is about integrating to build a lifestyle you want as an empath, as an intuitive, as a light worker, is to finally go and get after and build your holistic health business that can get you the life you are meant to be living, to amplify the purpose you were brought here on this planet. So I'm going to leave it with this one. I'm going to finish my coffee. And um, hopefully hopeful this was helpful. If you want to share some thoughts, leave your comments below. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. And um, what I'll be heading is uploading and posting regular guided meditations to really to reconnect with our inner self. And we will be having various online calls regarding the mind, body, spirit aspects of it. But we will also starting having calls regarding the whole marketing business side of things where the rubber hits the roads and where you can find the meat and potatoes of what it is that I am actually talking about and not some kind of philosophical, idealistic perspective, but more about fueling our day-to-day -day little minutes we might have in the day and extract or develop discipline, even in the tiny little time we've got left. So I'm looking forward to embark on this journey together with you to remember who we are always were meant to be.